guys. So, welcome to my video on scapular stability. So we're going to be using the bands, and I have um, three bands. One is medium, one is light, one is heavy. They should be labeled as such. Um, my bands may be different colors than yours. Lots of people make different types of bands. Um, mine are latex free. If you find that your bands are breaking a lot on you, you might actually want to invest in some latex free ones. I have had these for years and they have no sign of breaking. So um, just a thought, you may want to um, invest in them. I don't know why, I don't know what the difference is in them, but I'm just making an observation, that's all. So we're going to be working with the light band. We're going to be doing scapular um, stabilization. So here's something, um, I use the doorknobs, but I use both sides of the doorknob. So something that people, I guess, don't do, this is the way that I've done it. Whenever I show people these exercises, they're like, oh, I never thought they were doing it that way. So usually we have space somewhere around a doorknob. <laughs> Might not be the most convenient room in the house, but who cares? Because you can do the exercises, right? So um, hopefully you watched the previous video that I did on sort of how to figure out where your dominance are um, for the upper body. Um, it's really important that you try to really be receptive and understand that. Also, in my Pilates basics videos, when we're laying down and working on the shoulders, that's an easier version of what we're doing. Because you need to, uh, shoulder blades are tough to figure out um, because they're behind us. When do you actually physically see your own shoulder blades? You don't. So you need as many cues and as much feedback as you can until you get it figured out, okay? So, um, yeah, that's that. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and you're going to get your band, your light band, okay? Um, the bands, just so you know, light, medium, heavy, it's not about how strong you are. It's about the size of the muscles that we're trying to engage. So, um... So just keep that in mind, okay? Light band, small muscles. We're trying to work on the insertions of the muscles and the origins and the small muscles that don't want to work. You're not going to activate those with a heavy band, okay? That's why a lot of times personal training doesn't work because it just works on the dominant big bellies of the muscles that are used to working. It does not balance anything. It makes the strong stronger and the weak weaker, okay? So this is where Pilates comes in. Properly trained Pilates instructor should be able to help you balance your body. They should be able to see and um, understand where your muscle imbalances are and help you improve around that, which makes you more functional, which means that you get to do everything else that you love so much better. Even if it is personal training, great, but you got to activate the muscles that don't want to work. And you're not going to do that with heavy weight, okay? So I promise you'll still grunt and burn with these exercises, even with a light band, okay? So let's go ahead and wrap it. Um, so what you're gonna do, you get the side of a door, okay? I realize that mine isn't very pretty right now. So you're gonna go ahead and wrap it around. Now I'm shorter, so I wrap mine with it down below, okay? because I'm shorter. So I want my line of pull to be a little bit lower, so sort of in line with my elbow. If you're taller, you go underneath the, uh, the door thingy, latch, uh -huh. and then you come up higher. See, for me, this is too high. And it's amazing what a difference a few inches makes. When it comes to upper body, this is why counters, I have so many tall people, and they're like this to get down to counters, and I have short people, and we're like this, trying to get to counters. So it's, it's even when you're like making food and doing dishes, right? These things are huge, okay? So unless you're the perfect height, uh, you're going to discover that you go one way or the other. Okay, guys, ready? So shoulder blades. We've already discussed it in previous videos about what your shoulder blades do. So when we're doing these exercises, we're trying to not create what I call spine cleavage. Okay, spine cleavage is when you do this. Okay, so 
is literally where you lose the spine and you're ramming your shoulder blades together and your spine is pushing forward. When you do that, I'm going to show you the side profile of what happens. Watch my neck. I don't know if you guys, I think you can see my low back. Maybe not when I'm doing it though. So watch. See what happens to my neck when I'm doing this? And I'm trying to align, but I can't because I've locked my upper spine, my thoracic spine, into a position that it can't actually move it. And then I'm jamming my entire rib cage. My neck gets locked, my core gets, well, the core's not there, back get lo gets locked all the way through. So don't let your shoulder blades go in. If your shoulder blades pop, I do a really good job of this. I can do freaky things with my shoulder blades, okay? So it's kind of, it's, it's one of those gifts. <laughs> so you can pull your shoulder blade in and over, okay? If your shoulder blade flips up off your back, well, if you're relaxed and that happens, that's actually healthy, right? I do Thai yoga massage and one of it is to try to grip underneath people's shoulder blades and pull them up. They should be able to move. But what we don't want is when you're trying to engage to have them lift and jam in. That's not using your shoulder blade pop properly. Same with tipping out at the bottom corner. So you might also tip out, okay? That's not healthy. What you want your shoulder blade to do while you're moving is stay wide between them, okay? So a lot of people get this wrong because we've been taught, um, tall guys, usually, right? And women, right? Doesn't matter who you are. You're a woman, you stand tall, right? And stand tall, stand tall. Um, sorry guys, not to leave any guys out. I don't know how many commands like guys get about stand tall, but what we think is stand tall is like this, right? And we're walking around with our back extended, right? Everything's just horrible. And it's this, it isn't. Anatomically, your ears, shoulders, hips, and he, and uh, ankle bone should be in a straight line, okay? So it's not what you think it is, right? A lot of people, I'm just like, just pull it back a little. It's like, oh, it's that subtle. Yeah, it's that subtle, okay? Don't mess up your body. So many messed up bodies from really bad things that we were told when we were young, okay, guys? Enough talking, get your bands, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna face one way. Okay, you're gonna hold your bands like you're talking into a microphone. Okay, so the band goes right where the thumb, the end of the band goes where the thumb and the index finger are. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Start with one side. My right side is my weaker side. Okay, so in the back, because I'm very right-handed. So make sure you can sit on a ball while you do these. You can sit on the ground. You can sit in a chair, right? If you wanna take the bottom part of the body out of it. If you're sitting on something, and you want to think about your sit bones grounding, so don't use your legs, okay? If you're standing, okay, feet are hip to shoulder width apart, good, you're softening the knees, you're softly tucking the bum. So when you tuck the bum, it's about lengthening the low back, okay? And just feel the core recruiting and lifting, okay? You're going to pull open, good, and slowly go back in open. It's not the front muscles working. And in. Okay. Open. And in. Good. Stay facing the same side as the door. Okay. Go slow in both directions and you're working in the back. So think about the top of the arm bone, the head of the humerus, rotating back into the shoulder blade, but don't move the shoulder blade. Keep it wide. And then slowly come back in. I'll show you from the back what that looks like. You're gonna pull open and in. That was a bad one, okay? I can feel my shoulder blade coming up. Like I said, this is my bad arm, and I think I forgot to mention, this is my second time doing this video. So, <laughs> so my right arm is already like, you know what, lady? I'm not very happy with you. So go out. If you feel it pulling in and you can't stop it, push the ribs back, okay? Pull the shoulder wide, recruit your lats, and get into your core and then slowly return it. You can also do what I call a little shoulder shimmy. So I used to belly dance, okay? And we used to do this little shoulder shimmy. It's small and it's sexy. It's not this giant, like, weird thing, okay? It's like, hello, how are you? So it's, it's that tiny little alignment to get into the back muscles, okay? Now, now we're over 
here, you're going to pull and go in. Good. Now we're going to switch over to the other side. Again, make sure that you're hanging on like a microphone. Don't have it like this. Okay, palm up. Okay, and we're going to pull open and in. Good. Open and in. Now, on your um, non-dominant side, so my left side is weaker in the front, it should be easier in the back. Where you may feel it in your non-dominant side is in your neck and in your supraspinatus. It comes all the way up in here. Okay, that's weak on this side. So, and usually you're over tight on the other side. So this working is actually going to start to relieve the other side of the neck. It's not just about stretching. When all you do is stretch, you're not repatterning the body to work something else. You're not balancing the muscles. You're yanking and creating an instability in the body and your body freaks out and says, what the hell? What am I supposed to use? So if you don't tell your body what to use, it's just going to go back into bad habits. You need to repattern. Okay, open and in. Good. Now, I want you to face the door. Good. Yeah. Again, palms up. Grab onto the bands. Okay, and now you're going to do both at the same time. It's going to be hard. Open. Feel what the right shoulder's doing. Pull it down. Feel what the left shoulder's doing. Shake out the neck. Relax the jaw. Stick your tongue out. <sighs> okay, relax the anus. Come back in. Pull open. And in. Good. Pull open and then make sure the shoulders aren't falling forward. So make sure you're soft through the low body. Okay. If it's too hard standing, bring yourself down. Bring yourself down. Good. Do one more. Good. And in. Good. Now, you're going to face uh, the same direction again. Now you're taking an overhand grip, just hanging on with the hand gently. Okay. Make sure that you have a good pull so the arm is over in front of the body. Okay, facing the side, you're going to pull away, pull the shoulder out of the socket, pull the elbow out, and slowly come back in. Good. While you're doing this, you need to make sure that you're staying back, especially with your dominant side. Your dominant side's going to want to roll and do that, right? Not sexy. Don't do that. Okay, pull open and in. Good. Open. Good. And in. Two more. Two. Good. And one. Good. And, and now switch over to the other side. Grab on. Okay. Good. And go open. What we're working here is the supraspinatus up into the upper trap. So again, on your non-dominant side, the back side is stronger, but these muscles are actually not uh, strong. If you have a torn supraspinatus, do not do this exercise. Okay. You can't. If you have a muscle tear, you can't work the muscle. You're just going to make it tear more. Okay? So, um, and if you ever get to a point in a muscle, if you've hurt yourself, and you get somewhere and then the muscle just sort of gives up on you, go see your doctor. Okay? Uh, you need to go get imaging done to make sure that you don't have a tear. Um, because once a muscle is completely torn, there's nothing they can do for it. So you have to make sure that you catch it while it's still a little tear. You might be able to um, let it fix on its own through rest, working the other muscles. Can get PRP, or there's also uh, not the best option, but there is um, usually the option of surgery. So pull out, good, and in. Two more, two, good, and one more, one, good, and in, good. Now placing, sorry to have my back to you guys, okay, grabbing on. So now you're grabbing on uh, palms facing you, so the ends are by the pinkies, okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull back. Now I want you to soften, okay? Get those hips moving, shoulders wide, pull and slowly return, okay? I want you to pull and slowly return. Good. Pull and slowly return. Good. Three and slowly return. Two. Slowly return. Good. One and slowly return. Good job. And if you've done all of those successfully, you should be ready to um, move on to the next video, which is working back facing, which you're going to get to see my back a whole lot more. And then you can work ahead into the front facing. 
Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Lots of information. Please like and subscribe and share. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Bye guys.